This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning. Uh, this I'm Matt Schwartz. I'm chair of the Worksite Wellness Council. <laughs> to, sorry for the, for the noise there. I welcome you to our uh, January of 21 uh, Worksite Wellness uh, virtual, comp, or virtual uh, conversation. Uh, we're happy that you're here and uh, happy new year to everybody. So what I'm going to do is, um, again, we're recording the session on um, on Thursday, the 21st of January, 2021, and I'm going to pass the baton over to Patrice Fife, who's one, who's now our, uh, well continuing co-chair for uh, monthly conversations, and Patrice is going to introduce our facilitator for the morning. Patrice. Thank you, and good morning to everyone, and happy new year. We are so excited and thrilled that you have continued to uh, join us with our uh, monthly conversations. And today we have a wonderful, wonderful speaker. His name is Adam Gordon, and he is with PTO Genius. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, PTO, the paid time off, a year in review. Uh, PTO is broken, and how can you fix it? And uh, reimagining PTO for the future of the work. Course. So without any further ado, we would like to turn this over to Adam. Take it away, Adam. Thank you, Patrice. Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, hope you all have had a, a good start to the new year. Um, you know, uh, a fortuitous conversation with Tiffany Caldwell uh, led me to speaking with you, Patrice, which, which led us here. So uh, uh, our organization is certainly grateful to be able to uh, share with you some insights and a little bit about what uh, we do and hope that you'll find value uh, in what we you know, share with you today. Um, uh, along with me is uh, one of our, another one of our co-founders. Uh, his name is Ulysses Orozco, but he goes by Yuli. Uh, so you know, he'll be joining us uh, as well. Um, so to that, uh, we wanna cover and just talk about really three things today all inside the world of you know reimagining paid time off and for the future of work and, and what does that mean so we're going to cover pto uh, a year in review uh we'll explain why we think pto is broken and and how you can fix it and then we'll talk about finally you know the future of work and how pto maybe could be looked at in a different lens and some things that you could do um uh that are you know more cutting edge or just simple things that you could do inside your organization uh, to help your employees and, and your culture. Um, so to that extent, um, you know, moving moving now into the uh, into the deck. And for all of you, by the way, just so you know, we had a there was a technical difficulty as a modern technology has it. So uh, Matt and I are working together here on the slide. So uh, in case any of you might hear me say uh, next slide, you know, a few times just to be able to help guide Matt, which we appreciate. So. Uh, PTO, a year in review. So, you know, what did we all learn uh, in 2020? Well, <laughs> quite frankly, 2020 was a tough year, and I'm sure a lot of us would just like to have a do-over or just move past it and get into where we are right now, simply said. Um, but moving on to the next slide, what we did learn from clients in HR is that, that we are in HR, we are resilient. You know, we're creative, we are dependable. When our employees and our companies needed us the most, we stepped up. In some cases, without fanfare, without celebration, or even the ticker tape parade, you know, we got creative and we thought out of the box. And for the first time in a long time, in some cases, we got nimble, we thought dynamically, and we came up with solutions. And for a lot of you, on a personal note, you know, we have, uh, you know, my family, some people are in HR. And 2020 was a great chance for a lot of people in HR to be able to really prove their value or, or, or show what they can do. Whereas, you know, sometimes companies can take HR for granted. Um, maybe employees can take HR for granted. And 2020 was really an opportunity to show a company how important and how HR really can be the, is the nucleus of an organization. Now, people forget that HR, you all care about the people inside the organization and you're there to really be the glue of it. So for a lot of you, it really gave you a seat at the table and I think a lot of us are grateful for that. So, you know, 
what were some of the things that we learned? Well, we learned that through a large study done by Sherman, Willis, Towers, Watson, that a lot of companies in HR really started to think about PTO differently, right? So a little under 50% of companies decided during 2020 to make changes to their sick day programs, their PTO and their vacation policies, right? Almost a quarter of all of companies across the United States increased their carryover limits on PTO as people started to accrue and couldn't take days off or, or, or do anything with those accumulation days. And then we also saw that a, a decent percentage of companies, for whatever reasons, they required their employees to take vacation time because they didn't want them to accrue and build up those hours, right? As we all know, different industries were affected in different ways during the pandemic, but we started to learn and see that companies started to adapt to these changes on the fly and modify their leave policies where necessary. So that leads us to our next, our next section, which is that the PTO is broken, but we can fix PTO. So why is PTO broken? It's broken because employees aren't taking it and we are doing a bad job of encouraging employees to take it nationwide. So what are some of the reasons for that? So on the next slide, one of the most important reasons or factors in that is managers, right? Managers are, are, are the ones that need to encourage PTO. So a study was done and found that 80% of employees said, hey, I will take more PTO if you just encourage me or you give me the okay to take it. Because a lot of times people are afraid to take PTO because of fear. I have fear of being replaced, guilt. I feel guilty if I, if I take time off and leave more work to my teammates or workplace pressures. My company might say they promote people taking paid time off, but maybe really underneath though, they really don't want you doing that. But for whatever the reason is, your employees, you know, people that report to you, they want to take time off, but sometimes it's just something as simple as just tell me it's okay and then I'll go do it. So that was a really unique statistic that we came across and something simple that we can all do to help fix PTO. On the next slide is another example or what happens when you do those things, right? So, uh, you know, almost 40% of employees say that um, my company says that they encourage PTO. But then how do you as an organization actually follow through and make sure that that happens? There are some simple steps that you can do, which we'll talk about later, to help you be able to do those things to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk as well. Uh, and moving on to the, the next slide, right? So if we want happier employees, there's something really simple that we can do. And that is that just promote vacation, right? Show your workforce that you care about them, that hey, when you're here, we know you're working hard. We know right now that the United States, since the pandemic began, has had the largest increase in the hours of an average workday than any other country in the world. The average workday has increased to over 11 hours, which is a, 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 a substantial increase compared to all of the developed countries in the world. And we all know why. Our commute can sometimes be as long as 50 feet from, you know, from our from our bedroom to our from to our to a desk. Um, you know, you no longer have that commute. It's easier to stay connected. So it's more important now than ever for us to promote people getting out of the office, even if that means closing the laptop and just doing something local, whatever it might be. But show and tell people that you want them to get away so that they can refresh, relax, and have that day off. Uh, and moving on to the next slide. So what happens when you promote and you help you actually help push people to take time off? Well, you're gonna see improvements in them, right? There's tons of studies that say, if you help people get out of the office, even if just for a day, you're going to see an improvement in how they, in how they focus, you're gonna see a reduction in any burnout, or you're going to help prevent burnout. And that of course leads to a better workforce, more engaged employees, better culture, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then moving on to the next slide, right? Some of the important things that come along with not only helping people feel better, but how it affects the business. And that is that if people are taking time off, 
they're more balanced, they're relaxed, they're, they're more engaged, and that can lead to a reduced, reduced turnover cost. A large study done ended up finding out that you can reduce your turnover by as much as 33% just by helping people take time off. And we all know that affects that, that affects, you know, if we have to reduce, we reduce turnover, we save time on putting out all those bulletin boards that we're, that we're hiring. It saves time in the recruiting process. It saves time and time to fill. And also it saves time, as we all know, when you have to hire and bring on someone new, there's an education process and a transfer of wisdom from someone that's onboarded from all the people that are already working there to pass that knowledge on to them. So just by doing things simple like helping and encouraging people to take time off can reduce a big cost to an organization and turnover. So in moving on, PTO. What we have seen in today's world is PTO as, as, as we have seen it is really what we call pretend time off. It's pretend time off because there are companies that do encourage you to get away but what happens when you're away? You're not really away. You're getting interrupted by emails, you're getting dinged by Slack, you're getting text messages, people are calling you, you're being asked for things. Even the companies that encourage it are, taking are, are doing pretend time off. It's broken, right? Think about when is the last time that, that you or maybe some of your employees really truly took a day where they were unavailable. It used to be years and years ago that couple of places you had to go to to avoid getting any type of internet service or being able to have someone reach you was going on a cruise ship and being out in the Atlantic you know or being in a mountain but now we know that it's you can constantly be connected no matter where you are so you really want to try to make sure that you encourage people and you promote a culture that says hey look when you are out of the office you are truly out of the office we have seen some companies go as far as to tell people that if you if you do not touch anything while you're out, meaning no email, no messages or anything, we'll reward you. We'll pay you a bonus when you come back from vacation from truly disconnecting. We've also seen companies that say, look, when you leave, we are gonna reset the password on your email, on your Slack, everything. So you can't even access anything that you need because we truly want you to stay away. So there are small things that you can do to really help for people not only promote taking time off, but to truly help them disconnect, to be able to refresh and recharge and come back and bring that positive energy into the office and have everybody feed off of it. So we need creative solutions on how to tackle PDO. So how do we fix it, right? So one example that we can do on the previous slide is just something as simple as rewriting your policy. Take a look at your PTO policy. Right now is a, is a time of the year or you know, last month and this month where a lot of us in HR are revisiting our, our handbooks, dusting them off, you know, changing policies. Take a look at your policy. I encourage you to review it. Is it clear? Maybe add language that says clearly that your company values every single person that works there and that you want them to be at their optimal performance and you want them picky, taking PTO and you want them to recharge. You know, read that policy as if you were the employee that you were handing it to. Is it clear? Does it say that you want them to be able to have work-life balance? Doing something as small as that and making those changes and bringing it out to the, to the team could really improve morale, could really make a difference in someone's life. We all know that sometimes doing something so simple to us can make such a big impact on someone else, and this is a great example of that, which doesn't cost anything. Uh, and moving on to the next slide, or you know, encourage it. You're doing a lot, you're juggling. Look for a way to automate things. Look for opportunities for employees to get away. Even if it's just for a day, for a half day, to make it a long weekend, or even a week. But look in and find ways to encourage people to get out of the office. It's easier said than done, but you all in HR have a million things that you are, that you are juggling right now. But there are systems out there that can help you do that including hours, by the way. But look for ways that you can automate things or get things off your plate so you can focus on your core competency as an HR professional. And the last one, you know, right here on the slide, uh, on the previous one, you know, as a coach, you know, having handoff guides, right? If you have proper handoff guides, there won't be such thing as paid time off. So research shows 
that proper planning before someone has some planned PTO can lead to an increase in productivity and in happiness. So simple things like, hey, you're gonna, it's four weeks before you're gonna be taking your scheduled vacation for, for a week or two. Having a proper checklist of things for people to do, such as, hey, uh, you know, uh, a week before you're gonna meet with your team to talk about handing off certain client things. You're gonna, you know, two days before, don't forget to set your office reminder. Little things like that to make sure that people have a plan in place so that by the time that they leave, they feel good about knowing that when they leave the office, they've left their team in a good place, they can feel really good, so anxiety is reduced, people don't feel like they have more to juggle all of a sudden now when one of their team members is left. And most importantly, it's about when you come back from, from work, right? How many of us have taken vacation from work and initially, right, what happens? It takes a couple of days to adjust to being out of the office, then we're getting in the groove of being out, and then what happens? There is the anxiety of coming back to work. Oh my gosh, how many things are gonna be on my plate? I'm gonna have an inbox of 267 emails to deal with. So all of a sudden, the relaxed and euphoric feeling that we have from work can really quickly dissipate. So studies have shown that 68% of employees feel refreshed and more productive after taking time off extend that feeling for them, which will lead to increased happiness, productivity, other people in the office are gonna feed off of it, it's gonna be infectious. Imagine if you had a world, I understand it's easier said than done, but if, imagine if you had a world when you came back from vacation and you had an inbox of zero, and you met with your team, they shared with you all of the things that were done before, they, before you left, so you had a proper handoff before you left, which leads to a, an easier and proper handoff when you come back. Simple things like that you can create and speak with your department managers or your teams about to help make your employees' lives easier, to show them that you care about them, and to help make their work life easier, and to help have a really, truly impactful time off when they take it. So that brings us to uh, the third part, which is really a reimagining uh, the future of, of, of PTO. So, uh, you know, we've talked about what happened last year. We've talked about um, some things that we can do to fix PTO because it's broken. And now we're getting into, well, okay, what other changes can we make? And how can we kind of reshape or re-envision what PTO can be? Because companies are starting now to look to optimize and change things in their businesses and, you know, really look at things through a different lens. So now is a great time to do that at the beginning of the year. And PTO was such a hot topic last year, and it's certainly going to be for this year as well, that you know, Patrice and Tiffany and Matt and the staff thought this was really timely. So we'll share with you our insights that, that uh, they saw value. And so at PTO Genius, so our software helps a company automize and automate their existing PTO benefit, resulting in lower insurance premiums, workers' comp claims, unscheduled absences, and turnover, while leading to increased overall employee engagement and productivity. Uh, we plug into a company's your existing HRIS or payroll systems and work, with con work in concert with them. And we cater to all PTO types. So you know, here on our mission is something really important to us. Our focus is improving the lives of America's workforce. And we do that by building software that fundamentally transforms the way that companies go about doing things. And the first thing that we're focused on on the next slide is PTO. So PTO is the second most requested benefit, yet 55% of US employees don't use all of their accrued PTO. Why? We mentioned earlier, typically it's because it's out of fear or guilt or workplace pressures. And on the next slide, that can lead to all sorts of problems for, for the employee we mentioned earlier, can lead to increased anxiety, increased burnout, and that can reduce creativity, can reduce happiness, right? For any of you that have marketing departments or have really creative people, that is a really vital skill set and in, 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 in department in your organization. We all want those people to have a, a, a really you know, happy overall energy, everyone in the office that we do. But these problems also affect the company and affects the company in a real dollars and cents way here. So, 
there's nearly $5,000 in revenue per employee that a company is missing out on because employees are not taking time off. So what happens when people aren't taking time off? Well, there's an increase in things like sick days where there's 63% and people are more likely to take a sick day. An increase in unscheduled absences of over 50%. We mentioned that it can lead to higher turnover. It can also lead to an increase uh, in lower profitability, right? So if your company has a traditional PTO policy, which 98% of companies across the United States do, and the overwhelming majority in Kentucky do, your company is sitting on an average of $2,000 in PTO liability per part-time employee per year. And for those of you with full-time employees or employees that might be in sectors like technology or, or healthcare or other white-collar areas, those figures can be even higher. So on the next slide is something that just shows you the impact of that. So if you're, if you're a company that's even 500 employees, you have an average of almost two and a half million dollars in lost revenue and are carrying close to a million dollars in PTO liability. And that's just an impact on those two line items to your company because your employees aren't properly taking time off. So we built technology that ultimately addresses this issue by servicing opportunities for employees to get away at non-disruptive or company-friendly times while also providing the ability to use PTO for something meaningful. So here we can increase employee engagement, which has a positive impact on shareholder value uh, to your clients. So everything that we do contributes to boosting shareholder value by some of the things you see here in the green squares, which we'll, we'll cover a couple of them here next on the next slide. So you know, first is what we call an optimizer. So one of the biggest challenges that, that we see is that over the course of the year, and you all might see this in your business, your company, people generally don't know the right time to take off. Or we've seen that people are just afraid to request off. So over the course of the year, we bury our heads in the sand, we're working hard, and what happens? We get to the holidays, December 1st rolls around. For a lot of you, that's the time that you have to start calling employees and saying, hey, you need to take time off by the end of the year because either you're going to use it or lose it, or you want to reduce some of the carryover that you're going to have, or it's time for you to take a break. And at that point, everyone puts in requests to be out the last two weeks of the year. And for some companies, for some of you, that's a busy season. You don't want people taking time off. For some companies, they're saying, hey, listen, we still have expenses we need to produce. We can't afford for everyone to be out at once. So we have what's called an optimizer. So through artificial intelligence and data, we help better spread out the use of PTO over the course of the year by proactively surfacing opportunities for people to get away during non-disruptive or company-friendly times. So an example of that is our software might say, uh, hey, Susan, you haven't taken a day off in six weeks. Well, next month on this particular week, coverage for your team or department or location, it looks great. Why don't you put in requests, make it a long weekend, or just take a week off to relax, refresh, and recharge. And then from that, we're able to show you as an HR professional, hey, which departments are not taking time off? Uh, which ones are the biggest offenders? Which ones are now having a reduction in productivity? Right? Time and attendance and lead management systems do a fantastic job of telling us, well, how many days of PTO we have left? How many have we used? But what are we doing to help promote people taking time off? Right? In HR, we have a ton of things going on. And what we do is help take that burden off of HR. And through this tool here, we help automate that and promote people to get out of the office, which echoes your company culture of helping people say, hey, we want to see work-life balance. On the next slide is something that we call travel and experiences. So over 75% of employees we know are experiencing some sort of work-related stress and anxiety in the workplace. So companies that can help promote people taking time off, we talked about are more have healthier employees, more productive employees. So one way to do that is to be able to surface really fun vacations or experiences or once in a lifetime things for people to be able to do. And that's what our platform does. 
We teamed up with one of the largest travel providers in the United States that does about $8 billion a year in travel. And we said, hey, we want to be able to help people get out of the office. So our system not only encourages and finds great times for you to be out, but we help promote really fun things that you can do with that. Taking trips, uh, you know, for some of you that are, have employees that are afraid to step on an airplane right now, we promote really exciting things to do right inside your own backyard that can be simple experiences like, hey, John, did you know 10 miles down the road from you is an amazing farm? Why don't you get out of the office for the day? Next Tuesday looks great. Why don't you go ride horses? Go clear your mind, put your phone down, get away from the screen, and come back to the office on Wednesday on hump day feeling refreshed and sharing with your team such an amazing experience that you had and smelling like a horse, right? Or maybe it's something as crazy as, you know, taking a Top Gun fighter jet experience, doing something wild and coming back to the office and sharing with your friends what you did. No matter where someone lives in the United States or in Kentucky, we promote really fun things for people to be able to do to help nudge and get them out of the office. And if a company wants them to, they can allow them to pay for that or a portion of those with their accrued PTO dollars. And on the next slide is something that speaks to a lot of us, and that is financial wellness. So if a company allows uh, their employees to do that, we uh, to do this, we will easily help your employees convert a portion of their accrued PTO into cash that can fund different financial wellness things that speak to them. It could be something as simple as for any of your employees that are new to the workforce and have student loans. They can help pay down their student loan debt with your accrued PTO. That's a hot topic right now. For any of you that have employees who are building a family, we can help put those PTO dollars into a college savings plan. Or for some of you thinking about your golden years, if you can't take time off, you can put some of those dollars into your retirement in a pre-tax manner. So for people that can't take time off and you don't want to have their employees accrued PTO go to waste, you can decide what portion of your PTO you want to allow employees to convert in cash that they can invest in their financial well-being so that you can show them in different ways that you care about them and you don't want those that time to go to waste for them. And the other thing that we do, which helps provide peace of mind on the next slide, is that most people don't know that eight out of 10 of your employees that work for you are living paycheck to paycheck. And almost half of those people cannot afford a $2,000 emergency expense. So if you're one of your employees' uh, daughter's, daughter falls and chips her tooth or, or his car breaks down or something happens, it's stressing them out. It's affecting their life. It's affecting them at work. And that's not good. And so we provide the ability for companies to give peace of mind and say, hey, if there is an emergency and you need money in between pay cycles, we don't want you turning to a payday loan or trying to borrow money from someone. So if a company allows it, we will provide the opportunity for someone to convert a portion of their accrued PTO into cash that we can put in their bank account instantly within seconds to help take care of that financial emergency and reduce that financial stress. So in moving on to the next slide, really what we do is help companies reimagine what it is that they can do with their PTO by optimizing and automate it to help reduce costs and more importantly, to help HR and finance sit on the same side of the table to be able to show your employees that you care about them while also helping to reduce some important costs to the organization. So uh, thank you again to the committee, to Patrice, Matt, Tiffany, and everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are done with our portion of the, of the presentation. I uh, would love to field any questions that you have and answer anything, or if you have any comments, anything that you'd like to speak about, we're all ears and happy to speak to you about it now. Thank you. Well, thank you, Adam. That was uh, that was great. It was uh, uh, really insightful. And I, I guess what I, uh, I'm going to first ask, I'm looking at the chat box, I don't see anything, but if you have questions, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead, I'll stop the recording, and then we can continue uh, the conversation, and I have a, actually, I do have a, a question or two, but uh, let me, let me go ahead and stop that. So thanks for